but one thing that was pretty amazing to me was to, and I, because I didn't quite realize this, but Mandan Nation and the trading, the market where, where Lewis and Clark encountered Sacagawea um, <clears throat> was like the biggest trading center at that time in the, what is now the United States. So it had more economy, more trade, more people than Washington, D.C. or a lot of other urban areas, Philadelphia, on the East Coast at the time that were considered to be very large in 1804. So I don't, you know, I think a lot of Americans don't think of <clears throat> tribal nations as being economically sophisticated, but at that time, now of course the U.S. policy really desecrated um, that economic center, and it's much revived today, and, and of course the Mandan, Hidatsa, and Arikara Nation are still here today. They weren't you know, completely eradicated, but just trying to understand um, what an economic powerhouse this place was, um, you know, and this tribal nation was, when Lewis and Clark encountered it. I think it's something that a lot of people, I, I, I was amazed to read that. If we lose this case in the Supreme Court, Ridge who spent the rest of his life as the son of the attorney who lost the nation's jurisdiction. I can't do that. I can't make my baby an exile in his own nation. I told you. Don't go back. If you do, they'll kill you. Until we really see the past for what it is, and we don't erase it or silence it or alter it from its truth, some of the, the darkest evils in terms of American history will just continue to repeat themselves. All of our industries want to expand but can't because of the Indians. This isn't about Georgia and the Cherokee or Mississippi and the Choctaw, Florida and the Seminole. This is about the economy of the entire United States, from the Potawatomi to the Cherokee until we move them all. The progress of the entire nation will be blocked. As a people, we are invisible. And what most people know about us is what little you learned in your history book or what you learned in Boy Scouts. All they ever did was fight to save the nation, your nation, my nation. And what did they get in return? My grandfather was stabbed 48 times in front of his wife and children. She laughed. She laughed. So I left, walked right out, and I never came back. So quit the case, cancel the appeal. I can't tell you what to do, but I see the difference between you and me. You never quit nothing in your life. No one's going to walk in, watch this play, and walk out with all the information they need. I couldn't put all the information in it that I wanted to. There was a lot of facts that I wanted in terms of historical points or just plot points that happened for Cherokee Nation, other tribes. I mean, again, one out of 573 tribes. I mean, this isn't even the full Cherokee story, let alone the full American Indian story. So what I'm hoping to do is just start that conversation. I say this as your friend. You find yourselves established in the midst of a superior race. And although you do not appreciate the cause of your inferiority, if you do not yield to the force and progress of civilization and move west, you will disappear. I hope that folks who come to see this play will take away the knowledge that their knowledge is incomplete. And that, and that the reason it's incomplete is not an accident. That was by purposeful design. But they also have agency to seek out what they don't know and to come at not just American history but the future, right, with a whole new fresh perspective and to see us. So tribal jurisdiction isn't unconstitutional, it's pre-constitutional. And no sovereign, not even the United States, can strip my nation of its inherent right to protect me and my fellow Cherokee women. The first step is to see us, and the next step is to recognize our place in this country. I truly believe that we are not going to be able to heal some of this nation's deepest wounds until we stop silencing the past. It will just keep repeating itself.